Hey guys, what's happening? It's a, it's a brutally hot day in Southern California, but today I need to troubleshoot and repair this uh, CNC control board. And I, I pretty much already figured out the issue, at least uh, I've been troubleshooting it for a couple hours. But um, yeah, this thing actually has bad MOSFETs, and uh, one of them like super overheats. And, uh, but this is a CNC control board. Uh, it runs on Mach 3 and other software, but it was called a Max NC, and so it's about 15 to 20 years old. Um, but it was actually one of the first, right around Mach 3, but it came with a CNC machine called a Max NC. So it was like an analyzed blue aluminum, small like CNC machine. And uh, but this is a control board, but it definitely had some unique features compared to like a modern day or a uh, newer system. But I'll show you that here. I think it came off the tripod. So I'll, I'll let you guys compare with a, a modern type setup. Um, but yeah, there's some pretty unique features about this. Um, and really interesting, and the reason I want to repair it. Uh, so this was just a little a cheapo, like little mockery board, parallel port mockery board. I really, I really probably wouldn't mess with it. I mean, they're 10 bucks. But this one is unique because it actually is a, it runs closed loop steppers in quadrature mode which is extremely unique. So having something that actually was closed loop back then was uh, crazy, crazy rare. You, you never saw it. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I want to mess with it. But these are actually high-end, like Pacific Digital American-made servos with uh, you know US Digital encoders. Um, but the unique thing about this board is, I'm not sure if you guys can tell or not, but the board and the driver are in the same board. One single board controls everything. The encoder, the stepper movement, um, you know, whereas a typical like modern like Mach 3 setup would be like a, uh, you, know, you have your control board, you have a, a stepper driver, then you have a stepper motor. You know, that's the, the sequence. This is basically like, like a dummy board that activates pins, parallel port pins. You know, there might be some optic couplers on it. Then it controls an external driver, and controls this. So this is typically 99% of the time I see it like this. Even with the full size CNC machines, you'll have your control board, you'll have your uh, you know AC servo drives, drivers, and then your servo motors. Um, but yeah, take a look at this setup. So it's interesting the design. So as far as I can tell, I'm looking at components in this thing. Um, these are actually amplifiers right here. Hope you can see. Maybe I'll get my light. Hope you can see that. Light's not good in here. But these are actually amplifiers here, and they're controlled by a thing called a PIC. Um, you know, as far as I remember, a PIC is like a programmable chip, sort of like a kind of like Arduino. You know, I'm trying to think of a, a way to. It's a programmable IC, as far as I know. That you can actually run firmware on, um, but I don't know a lot about PICs because I really wasn't doing that kind of electronics back then. Um, so it's sort of like maybe like an STM32 microprocessor. You can actually program the chip uh, with software, but um, me, I'll fire up uh, Mach 3, and actually Mach 3 had a specific uh, configuration for this board. Uh, it's called the Max NC or CL, and uh, well, what that does is it takes it out of step and direction mode and puts it into quadrature mode, which is extremely unique. You never see quadrature mode. It's super rare. Um, but these MOSFETs, the, the issue is I already cut one of the MOSFETs out, and so what these MOSFETs do is they're controlled by this amplifier and these are like step down resistors. I'm going to test these too. Um, they, well, they pull down. Um, and basically the motor is activated by a positive, positive signal. So there's, uh, as far as I know this motor has six coils. It's not like your typical unique you know, uh, four coil stepper or maybe two coil stepper depending on what you have. But um, So each of these MOSFETs when it's activated, the gate the gate is controlled by this little amplifier, which then is the pick controls the amplifier, and what it does is it grounds out the, uh, the I think at the source, more maybe I think it makes sure it grounds out the gate. I can't remember, but uh, I'll go more into the MOSFETs once I get them off there. But so it's basically controlling the motor function by ground grounding them out, and then the unique thing about this too is it won't move. So if, if it's not getting encoder feedback, as soon as it when the when the system tells the stepper to move, and if it doesn't get feedback from the, the stepper right away, it just shuts the motor off. So without encoder feedback, this thing is not moving anywhere. So um, 
a couple caps. Um, the caps are more like a, just like a buffer. So under a heavy draw, you know, or like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I guess heavy draw or like resistance, it uses as a buffer, like a power supply surge. Um, then you have a couple of rectifiers, some other MOSFETs. These MOSFETs control like the individual boards, like the spindle relay. Yeah, this is spindle relay right here. So it all actually works in Mach 3. I had it all working. Um, but yeah, like I said, because it's so unique, and I've already spent so much time playing with this thing, I wanted to uh, to fix it. Uh, like I said, it's even a self-contained box. Take a look at that. You have uh, two two re or two uh, AC. So it comes in as 110. That's a 110 volt uh, fan there. Then you have two different AC adapters. One is a like a what, like 6.3 volt, and which the 6.3 volt it comes out as AC. Then it hits this rectifier and it's converted to DC, and that powers all the actual picks and the amplifiers, the, the lower voltage. And this is actually a 12 volt, 12.6 volt AC adapter. Then it converts AC, hits this rectifier, converted to 12 volt DC, and that's actually what powers the uh, the motor. Um, you should actually be powering these with more. I think these are rated at 36 volts. So, um, or 60 volts? I can't remember. Somewhere, it says it on there somewhere. But they're definitely being underpowered for what you're doing. But the Max NC wasn't a very big CNC machine. Yeah, one thing I noticed is I, I did have a heatsink on there for a while, but um, typically with a MOSFET like this, you'd want to have a heatsink. I mean, it really depends on the actual current you draw. I mean, I'm not drawing, I'm not maxing. These things can hold like a 30 amps or something like that, and like a 60 volts. So they're not being stressed, but um, I typically would want heat sinks on those things. Um, but I suspect I might have a couple. Like I was able to get this motor working again by cutting this uh, MOSFET, a short of MOSFET off. And like I said that earlier, the problem is uh, I, this one is shorted out here. So as soon as I hook up the motor to it, it gets blazing hot and starts smoking. So it's definitely shorter to ground. Um, so I gotta figure that out. All right, so I'm gonna take the board off. Probably get my uh, hot air out. Yeah, it's really hard to remove MOSFETs when they're th pin three pin like that together with just a solder iron. You can with a solder sucker, but it's easier just with the hot air. So I'll try it with the hot air. If not, then I'll try something else. Right, so I got Mach three up and power this board on here. All right, so let me just show you the, the unique thing here. So in Mach 3, go to ports and pins, and see where it says max C CL. So CL is uh, closed looped. All right, so that puts it in quadrature mode. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, uh, right now I have it hooked up to the Z axis. It's really the only axis I know that doesn't heat up. The MOSFET, I don't have any short of MOSFETs, I know on that circuit. Um, but as soon as I hit stop, you're gonna hear a buzz from the, from the steppers. Hear that? Hear that buzzing? That means it's active. So when you hear that buzzing, that means you can't no longer move the motor. So as soon as you have Mach 3 active, you know, out of uh, e-stop mode, it will uh, lock up the stepper. Let's try that. Yeah, I don't know what the, I mean, it's, I mean, obviously not going to be like a micro-stepping driver. Yeah, you know, like with this, you have micro stepping. So I really don't even know what the driver. Is. You can't. The company's been out of business for probably over ten years, so you can't get any specs really too much on this. I'm sure if I research, I could figure it out. All right, so I'm gonna move the wires over to the uh, X, which is missing a MOSFET. So I'm gonna show you that real fast, and then I'll move it over to Y, and I'll show you what the problem is. All right, so I'm gonna put it out of emergency mode, and I should hear this beep again. So, originally when I had the MOSFET in there, it was shorted, and I'll show you that with a multimeter, but that would uh, overheat and start smoking, burning up. So I'm active here again, and this should be X. So it does work, see? Here it sounds different on one side, and then here, let me go back the other way. Doesn't sound as powerful going that way. Well, I'm thinking it's because one of the quills isn't to be activated by the MOSFET. Like I said, when they're activated, the gate activates the MOSFET. Well, basically ground it out, so it actually would activate one of the coils. So um, I'm suspecting that it's only being run on one coil. 
That's why you hear the two different noises. It sounds differently. Alright, so, and then this one right here, this is the one that's burning up right here. Let me uh, unplug it and I'll, uh, you know, see if my heat gun works. Wish I had a thermal camera. That's probably the next thing I'd want to get. I barely plug it in. Even with the motor not even activate, activated in Mach 3, um, I don't know if that's the hub, like a 99, that seems about right. Um, that's about right. Yeah, it gets hot fast. It's smoking red hot pretty fast. Um, that was another one I replaced. Um, but I did, I bought a pack on Amazon. So, um, I think I'm going to take all the MOSFETs out and test them individually. Um, but you that in the frame. I put this in bad mode. Alright, so um, alright, so between the uh, drain and the source, I shouldn't be getting any continuity. I mean that one shorted. That's shorted. So that should be totally open. So let me get a, a, a good one out here. Let me show sure you a good one is supposed to look like. Alright, so these are N-channel MOSFETs. I mean, this is uh, really about the same, not exactly the same. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. But I'm definitely underpowering these things. See? See, I'm not getting. See to have that work for a second? Basically what I'm doing is I'm charging up the uh, MOSFET in diode mode. So it works for a second and it shuts off. And this is not the best multimeter for this, but um, so what you can do is you can temporarily put a charge, if you're in diode mode, you can temporarily put a charge on the gate and that will temporarily hold this thing, the, the source open and allow you to actually, uh, you know, flow electrons between the uh, things. So maybe another video about MOSFETs, but if you're not familiar with MOSFETs, MOSFETs are like a solid state relay. Uh, they're electrically controlled switch. Just like an old typical car relay, you know, you're using a voltage on the gate and you're activating this you're activating the, the, the circuit and it basically creates continuity between the two leads, the gate or something the source and the drain. So just an electric, electrically controlled switch. So you're basically using a smaller current, like off one of these picks. Well let's say if you were using like an Arduino or you know STM32. Um, you're using a small current and voltage to drive a much larger circuit for current. Typically, these are using like uh, you know radios, amplifiers, you know whatever you know anything you need to actually send a lot of power through it. Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, this is a 20-year-old board, 15, 20-year-old board. Well, 2022, so they were out like late 90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s. So I don't know if that's high melt or low melt solder. So. Um, well, let me use my hot air station here and uh, we'll um, check it out. So I got the uh, MOSFET off here. And I actually took off one of the pads. The pad doesn't go anywhere, so it's not a big deal. But the top pad took it off, came off right there. But the, the trace is on the bottom, so. Um, Alright, take my multimeter. We'll do a check for short. On. So I'm looking for the short between the uh, uh, the drain and the source. All right, continuity mode. Right. You can see the camera. Right. Short. Yeah, that's not supposed to be uh, like that. It's supposed to be close. Right. I'm gonna go to the board to see like what. How bad some of these things are. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to go to each of these and check for a short. Um,
still with me on accident. Alright, so it looks like uh, I'm going to take off the replacement that I did too and put one of the other ones on there. Yeah, I know this wasn't rated. I think I just put it in there to test. Yeah, we've had a lot of different shorted uh, MOSFETs in here. So, I mean, I had three shorted MOSFETs on this board. Um, okay. So, they're all, we're all looking good in the MOSFETs. Um, so, I'm going to put the replacements on there. And, I mean, it's just a matter of like, going solder, solder, solder. <laughs> but I'm actually going to clean up the pads. Alright, so I'm going to use a little solder here. I'm just going to go back and... Yeah, I, I think this is high melt, high melt solder. Um, so it must have come from a factory. Um, anyway, they have an automated soldering machine. Um, solder. Alright. Alright, I'm going to get on these things. And I'm just going to clean up the pads here. So this was being a little headache, so I put some flux. I I got them through. A lot of solder wick in here. So let me just get that. Let you guys can see what I'm doing here. Alright, let's replace. Let's put that solder on here. Alright, so I got the, uh, those replacements right there. So, one, two, and three. I thought I might replace them all, but man, they were a headache to get off. Clean the pads. So, um, Let's see if this thing works. So let me get fire map three here. Um, all right, so here are the Z. I right now I just said the Z connected. So I want to make sure that at least the working access worked fine. Um, make sure I move this camera over so you can see it. That's right there. All right. Yeah, those monsters are fun too. So let me try the other one. So this is the where well actually I'll just move over to the other one here. So this is the one where the this actually is moss spent was was smoking before that one right there. So I'll know pretty fast. Once I plug this one in. As soon as I hook up the actual thing and I create the short, is the, the motor the short is actually from the motor. Alright, I'll hook up the encoder. And this thing would, because it was shorty, right? You're setting, you know, 12.6 volt and grounding it out. It's just great, basically creating a short right there. All right, so let's try the, um, this is, I believe, X. Let me show you this thing. All right, Y. Z, I might have to motor too, and I wanted the cables are loose. I may have it turned down way low. <laughs> Alright, so let me uh, put the case back together and I'll show you why it's so unique. Just the all small, tiny box, all integrated. Alright, there it is. So that's what makes this thing kind of cool. So cool was that you have a completely, you have a four axis CNC machine in this tiny little box. Drivers, power supply, you know, in this tiny, tiny little box. That's it, one power supply, then the spindle come off here. And, uh, all right, cool. New life, this old CNC machine. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I mean, I just thought it was so unique with those encoders, closed loop steppers, quadrature, just something I wasn't used to. Um, so I had to totally kind of learn about quadrature mode. Um, so it was a cool, fun and learning experience, you know, but, um, all right, guys, cool.